Welcome to Kalindy Hill Park, an amazing maritime public park on the east coast of Ireland, overlooking Dawkey and Kalindy villages. About 15 kilometres south of the capital city, Dublin. It's a coastal area of outstanding natural beauty with elevated rocky hills, pristine woodlands and sea views that stretch for miles. Hello, my name is Michael O'Flaherty and today we're going to discover the highlights of Kalini Hill Park. So come along with me. Kalini Hill Park stands proudly on a high granite ridge in the middle of what's been Ireland's most affluent location since the 18th century, when Dublin was the second city of the British Empire. In the 18th century, Dublin was a thriving city with its own parliament. The neoclassical building behind me was the Irish House of Parliament, and it was erected in 1729. It was one of many such Palladian-style buildings to be erected in the city during that period. It demonstrates the prosperity of the city at that time. City dwellers, however, had to endure the obnoxious odours emanating from the copious amounts of animal and human waste on the streets and in the cesspits of an overcrowded city with an expanding population. Wealthy aristocrats sought respite by vacating their impressive homes in the city, especially during the hot summer months, and headed to the sparsely populated coastal areas in pursuit of a healthier lifestyle. Beginning in the 1700s, the gentry built grand vacation villas along the coast south of Dublin. Some houses have been demolished, including Frascati House in Black Rock, built in 1739 and once owned by the Duke of Leinster. Luckily, some have survived, though some have been remodelled. In the 1800s, the emerging wealthy middle class followed suit and also built fine mansions in and near Kalini. Manderley Castle, formerly called Victoria Castle and Ayrshire Castle, is one of the most striking historic homes. It was once the home of the wealthy Powers Whiskey Distillery family. This public archway in Kalini village was once the private gated entrance to the castle. In these elegant homes, families relaxed in their lavish surroundings and entertained guests. They enjoyed boating and bathing as the new fashion of sea swimming was then called. Kalini Beach was especially popular for bathing because the tide doesn't go out far, unlike other strands nearer the city where the tide seems to go out for miles. Many of the 18th and 19th century elite who built homes here went on grand tours to Europe, especially to Italy. Naples was one of the most important cities and a very popular stopping off point for grand tourists. This is one of the many names you will see in Dorky and Kalini that reflects the influence of the Grand Tours. Kalini Bay became known as Ireland's Bay of Naples. The trend of wealthy people buying homes in Kalini and Dorky continues today. Kalini is often referred to as the Rock Brokers Belt because icons of the music industry, including Bono of U2 and singer-songwriter Enya, have homes here. After the arrival of the railway in the 19th century, the number of people building homes in Kalini increased significantly. It made commuting to the city easier and quicker. The train also increased the number of day trippers to Kalini Beach, which continues to be a popular seaside resort. For much of its history, Kalini Hill Park has been the private property of wealthy landowners. It's only been a public park since 1887. 
in that year, Kalini Hill was sold by its owner, Robert Warren Jr., to Queen Victoria's Jubilee Memorial Association. Later that year, the Queen's grandson, Prince Albert Victor of Wales, opened the park as a public pleasure grounds to commemorate the Queen's Golden Jubilee. A plaque on each of the two pillars at the Victoria Gate entrance commemorates this special occasion. The word Kalini is the English derivation of the Gaelic name of a nearby ancient church, which is now in ruins. Its name is Kil Inin Lainin, which means Church of the Daughters of Lainin. Kil Inin Lainin, Kil Line E, and this word Canuck means hill. Kalini Hill Park consists of two granite hills, Kalini Hill to the south, and Dorky Hill to the north. There are a number of entrances to the park. Victoria Gate on the landward side of the park is the main entrance. This is what it will look like when it's remodelled in 2022. The entrance to the car park on Burton Avenue passes a playground. There are three pedestrian entrances on the seaward side of Vico Road. From Victoria Gate, it's a relatively easy walk to the top of Kalani Hill. Just before reaching the summit, there's a wonderful spot to take in the sea air and the magnificent seascape of Kalani Bay which stretches to Brayhead in County Wicklow. A short walk and we reach the obelisk on the summit of the hill. In the mid 18th century, Kalini Hill was part of the estate of Colonel John Mapus. He built this conspicuous monument on its summit as a form of famine relief during one of the most severe famines in Ireland in the 18th century. An inscription on the front of the obelisk reads, Last year being hard with the poor, walks about these hills and this, were erected by John Mapus, June 1742. Originally there was an outside stairs going up to the platform, which was known as the Belvedere. From here, Mapus, his family and friends enjoyed panoramic views of land and sea. The obelisk is 170 metres above sea level. Locals call it the witch's hat. This obelisk may be built above an ancient Celtic stone cairn. Stone cairns were piles of stone used as a navigational aid or as burial mounds during the Neolithic period. In his will, Colonel Mapus left a large sum of money for the erection of a monument on the hill as a memorial to his family. It was built by Thomas Boucher, Usher of the Black Rod, in the Irish House of Commons. It's a small obelisk, just big enough for two people to sit inside. In 1741, Mapus built a large Georgian mansion, Mount Mapus, on the edge of the park. Today it forms the central block in the Fitzpatrick Castle Hotel. A century later, Robert Warren acquired the Mapus estate and in 1840 he restored and enlarged Mount Mapus House and renamed it Kalini Castle. He added a granite gate lodge with crenellated gate piers. He also restored the large obelisk which was in a dilapidated state. He removed the outside staircase and installed one inside. And he built the granite pillars and the park keeper's lodge which is now the tea rooms at the main entrance to the park. Warren built another folly, a stepped pyramid. Locals call it the wishing stone. According to folklore, if you walk around all levels of this step pyramid, from the bottom to the top, and then look in the direction of the ruins of St. Begnan's Church on Dorky Island, your wish will come true. Dorky Island was an important site of pilgrimage for centuries. 
St. Begna's church is believed to date from about the 9th or 10th century. Workmen sheltered in the church when they were constructing the Martello Tower at the beginning of the 1800s. It's now uninhabited and is a breeding ground for rabbits, birds and feral goats. During the summer months, visitors take the short boat ride from Collymore Harbour to explore the island. A short distance from the Wishing Stone, there are two ancient ruins, which may have been sites of Celtic worship. First of all, here under an oak tree, we have the Druid's altar. The word for Druid actually comes from the Celtic word for oak, drur. The Druids believe the oak tree is sacred and hosts to the strength and energy of their gods. And to catch a falling oak leaf brings good luck and prosperity. Behind the altar is this Druid's chair. It may have been a collapsed dolmen, and later on it might have been reshaped into a seat as you see it today. If it were a dolmen, it may have looked like this, the Glen Druid dolmen nearby. Behind me is the obelisk. I'm now on the green pathway and beside me is a row of seats with uninterrupted sea views. These seats were erected to people who once came here to enjoy the beautiful views but have now passed on. The dedication on this seat reads, Rest a while on this sweet seat where eagle's eye and ocean meet. To May and Pat, love from your grandchildren. Above the seats, almost hidden in the gorse, is this granite depiction of an eagle, about four feet high. We now head to Dawkey Hill. Dawkey Hill became part of Kalini Hill Park in the late 1930s, after it was purchased by Dunleary Corporation, bringing the total area of the park up to 80 hectares, which is 200 acres. Near its summit, partly concealed in a rock facing the Irish Sea, is a grave that marks the last resting place of Thomas Chippendale Higgin who died on the 6th of July, 1906. Higgin bought Dawkey Hill and Kalini Castle in about 1880. The inscription reads, Dust that art, to dust return it, was not spoken of the soul. In accordance with Christian tradition, the grave faces east and consists of an iron railing, a granite slab over the grave and a broken Celtic cross. This signal tower on the top of Dawkey Hill was built in the early 1800s as part of an extensive defensive system around the coastline of Ireland and its purpose was to raise the alarm in the event of a Napoleonic invasion. And soldiers in the tower would raise flags on a flagpole at the top of the tower to signal ships and nearby fortifications of an impending danger. Coastal fortifications include military Martello towers one of which is in Kalini. Beside the signal tower, also called the telegraph tower, is a radio beacon used to guide aircraft. It marks 10 miles from Dublin Airport. This gigantic stone sign, placed on Hawk Cliff at the base of Dawkey Hill, is an earlier aircraft mark. Its purpose was to notify fighter pilots in the Second World War that they were flying over ERA, the Irish Free State, which was neutral during the war. The signal tower stands on the edge of a large abandoned quarry. Which is a wonderful place for rock climbers to hone their skills. The sheer cliffs are 30 to 40 metres high. Beginning in 1815, tons of massive granite rocks extracted from the quarry were used to build Kingston Harbour, 
no one has done Leary Harbour since 1924. Massive rocks from here were transported to the new developing harbour at Kingstown by a funicular railway. This walkway, now called the Metals, is a small part of the path that contained the railway tracks on which the wagons rolled from the quarry down to the harbour, a descent of 9,200 feet or 2,800 metres. The railway worked on the premise that the loaded wagons going downhill pulled the empty ones up. This magnificent harbour was built between 1817 and 1842. It's still one of the largest man-made harbours in the world. The mailboat service from the harbour to Holyhead in Wales ran for 170 years, since 1835. Members of the British royal family, including King George IV, Queen Victoria and King George V, used this port of entry to Ireland. The harbour still welcomes guests, many arriving on cruise ships. Today, Dunleary is the sailing capital of Ireland, with the biggest marina and the most prestigious sailing clubs in Ireland. The harbour is a focal point for leisure activities. Since the 18th century, numerous homes, some grand, some modest, have been built in and around Kalini Hill Park. But one large development never got off the ground. In the 1840s, plans were drawn up for the construction of a neoclassical town on the east side of Kalini Hill. It was to be called Queenstown. But the plans were never implemented and today Kalini Hill Park remains a nature lover's paradise. About half the park is covered in mature woodland with a great variety of trees. On the seaward side there is an abundance of gorse, bush, ferns clinging onto the windswept rocky cliff face, sweeping down to the shore. Though the park is full of mammals and birds, all of them seem to be in hiding today except for Dexter. The wildflower meadows are homes for bees and other pollinators, which play a crucial role in biodiversity. The park has numerous trees dating back hundreds of years. But more recently, commemorative trees have been planted by various organisations such as Antashka, which protects and preserves Ireland's built and natural heritage. Popular Irish writer Maeve Binchy is one of the individual subscribers. She published 16 books with global sales of over 16 million copies. She lived in this house in Doggy Village, which is close to the base of Kalani Hill Park. The Vikings established a base here on this island, Doggy Island, in the 9th century. The word Doggy comes from the Viking word Dogeja which means Torn Island. Following the Anglo-Norman invasion of Ireland in 1169, Dorky became an important Norman town. The harbour here is called Collymore, which means in Gaelic, Big Harbour. Long before this harbour was built and during the late medieval age, the stretch of water behind me, Dorky Sound, was the principal port to Dublin. Ship owners unloaded our passengers and cargo here rather than risk being shipwrecked on the shallow sandbars in Dublin Bay on their approach to Dublin. Dockey was walled and had seven castles. Only two still survive. Archibald Castle, which is in ruins, and Dockey Castle, also called Goat Castle, which is now the home of the Dockey Heritage Centre. It includes the ruins of an old church and a small graveyard. In Dawkey Sorrento Park, there's a fine mosaic of the poet and lutist, John Dowlin. He was a close friend of the English poet and playwright, William Shakespeare. Legend has it that Dowlin's account of the Dawkey coast inspired Shakespeare when he was writing about the rugged shoreline of Elsinore in Hamlet.
just inside the main entrance is a surprising work of art. This bronze statue of Daedalus was inspired by a character in Homer's epic poem, The Odyssey. Daedalus used wax to bind together feathered wings so that he and his son Icarus could fly to freedom from their prison island of Crete. Unfortunately, Icarus flew too close to the sun, which melted the wax, and he plunged to his death into the Aegean Sea. The statue honours Ireland's famous writer James Joyce, who worked briefly as a teacher in a private school beside Kalini Hill Park in 1904. Joyce used Stephen Dedalus as the name for a central character in his masterpiece, Ulysses. The James Joyce Museum is housed in a Martello Tower, a short distance away in Sandy Cove, and is a mecca for Joycean scholars from around the world. Public parks, like Kalini Hill Park, were among the great innovations of the Victorian era. They were a recognition that access to open spaces for leisure contribute to health, welfare and contentment. Today the park is a protected site and part of the Dublin Bay UNESCO biosphere, which promotes conservation, preservation and biodiversity. It's managed by Dunleary Ratdown County Council. They are responsible for protecting and developing this unique natural treasure. The County Council organises heritage tours of the park every summer. They're free, informative and well worth a visit. Just outside the park there's a house called Torca Cottage where Irish playwright George Bernard Shaw lived between 1866 and 1874. The plaque on the pillar outside his old home states, the men of Ireland are mortal and temporal, but our hills are eternal. These words were surely inspired by Shaw's experience of living beside Kalini Hill Park. Here, generations of men and women have left a flourishing nature reserve on stunning immortal hills for future generations. I'm very lucky to live nearby. I'm a frequent visitor here. I love everything about this park. Most of all, I love a brisk walk in the cool morning air, which never fails to invigorate me. So if you come here, I'm quite sure you'll experience its very special ambience.